Good evening, everyone. And welcome to the Andrews University Masters of Science in Speech Language Pathologies White Coat Ceremony. Um, we are going to move through our program as noted. And so as our graduates and our newest professionals uh, go through this program and share this time with you, we know and pray that you will be blessed. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. It is my very great pleasure to welcome you all to the Andrews University Masters of Science in Speech, Language Pathology, White Coat Ceremony and Hooding Ceremony for the class of 2021. To all the family and friends with us this evening and to those who could not be here in person who are watching the ceremony or thinking of us graduates, as we celebrate this moment, welcome and thank you. We wouldn't be here tonight if it weren't for the love, encouragement, and prayers you have all given us over these past two years. Again, welcome to all and congratulations to the graduates. Please bow your heads with me as we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us all here safely. And thank you that we can be together as a class for this one last time before we all go our separate ways. Um, Lord, without you, we would not have gotten here. And what a journey it has been. There have been many obstacles, but you have been with us all throughout. Please bless this ceremony and all the events of this weekend. And as we go our separate ways to start our careers as SLPs, may we represent you in all that we do. Thank you for loving us. And again, thank you um, that we could all be here together. In your name I pray, amen. So, 2021, what a year, or what two years it's feeling like now. The graduates you celebrate with have, for all of us as faculty, been deemed the overcomers for obvious reasons. Most of their time in graduate school has been spent trying to figure out and weather the storms of a pandemic, being in class online, or no, wait, not online today. Wait, no, yeah, online today. Um, do we wear masks? What do they look like? Are they up? Are they down? Some of, I'm sure, the things that everyone here in this room have also experienced but I believe that as a collective group, this time and this experience has made them closer. It's also made them very resilient. Um, and we know as faculty, we're just excited about the professionals that they are going to be. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some housekeeping here. How many of you already have jobs? Nice, very nice, amen. Um, you, are, you are looking at a group uh, where we have most of them have completed all of their state requirements for their various states. Um, they have passed the national exam and they have definitely met the requirements to be sitting before you today. And it isn't something they by any means did alone. And so I want to take an opportunity to introduce our faculty and our staff team. I'm going to ask them to stand for me so that you can see who our faculty is. So 
over the last two years, um, this class of 2021, was also taught by Dr. Dajaris Coles White. She has uh, moved on from us, and as a faculty, we celebrated with her, and we absolutely wish her well. And we want to take the time today to welcome our new team member, Dr. Marilyn Tomei. And uh, we are really excited to have her with us and to have her participate in this evening's uh, events. So the only other thing I have to do now is to introduce our boss, <laughs> our Dean for the College of Health and Human Services. Um, if you asked me what I would say about Dr. Rudas Kara, I think the first thing that would come to mind is that he is a godly man. Um, he never begins a meeting or a conversation without praying first and dependent on the topic, he may stop in the middle and pray again. Um, but we are, as, as a team and as a college, very blessed to have him as our leader and we are blessed to have him address us this evening. So thank you. Good evening. This white coat ceremony is a testimony to the outstanding work faculty and staff in the School of Communication Sciences and the Disorders do day after day. This white coat ceremony is also a testimony to the resilience and um, the determination of our students to do their very best in their preparation to become excellent speech language pathologists. I commend all of you, faculty, staff, and students for your dedication as you labor to ensure that Andrews University continues to be the best place to live and learn. I commend you for the resourcefulness you have exhibited in dealing with all the challenges that have come your way, especially those related to the pandemic. I congratulate you graduates, and I congratulate your families and friends whose support has helped you to achieve this very important milestone. We are very pleased to graduate a new cohort of speech language pathologists. You are not another cohort. You are a special cohort. You are a unique cohort, especially in the eyes of God. You are graduating from Andrews University, where students learn a unique way to seek knowledge, affirm, I want to hear from you, affirm and change. Yes, you have been trained by the best professors who combine rigor and grace, who are grounded in the word of God and who facilitate the learning of their students with eternity in mind. Because we know the rigor of your preparation, and because you know your unwavering commitment to service, we are sending you out with full confidence that your service will make this world a much, much better place. 
Once again, congratulations. May God bless you. And may God bless Andrews University. Good evening, everyone. My name is Kaya Williams, and I'm just going to give a little thank you um, for the time being. First, I want to um, thank all the professors that played a significant role in um, our journey here and helping equip us to be um, the professionals that we're becoming today. Um, I'm really grateful as well for my classmates and friends that I've made throughout this journey. Um, I wouldn't have been able to do majority of the things I was able to get through without them. Um, and I can't imagine it any other way. Um, lastly, I would like to thank my family um, for their support and unconditional love um, and believing in me consistently, even when it was probably hard to believe in myself with some of the hard times and challenges that came about, especially with COVID and everything, just making this journey a little bit more difficult, but they were always there um, believing in me. And lastly, I want to thank God. Um, without him, none of this would have been possible. So constantly thanking him for bringing all of us and myself to the place that we've become today. So thank you. All right. Hey, y'all. <laughs> um, my name is Brian McDaniel. Amen. Amen to that. Yes. Um, well, we made it. Um, I look around and I wonder, how did I get here? <laughs> like, seriously, <laughs> how did I get here? Um, it's just so surreal to be standing here in front of you today. And I'm so grateful. Um, lost my spot. Hold on. <laughs> Uh, um, for those who may not know, uh, I was a transitional student. And so if you don't know what transitional student means, um, I received um, or worked uh, for my master's um, in three years, um, beginning with a year of prerequisites um, to learn the science and behind speech and hearing. What is typically done over four years, I had to do in one. But I wasn't alone. Shout out to the TK3 kids, Damaris and Jasmine. Yes, um, we were in this thing together. Um, we were on the same track. Um, we took the same course classes together. Um, literally could not have done it without these two. So I'm very grateful. Um, we've cried together, we've laughed together, struggled together, struggled more together. And so for that, I'm really grateful that I was able to endure that with these two. Um, I came to Andrews after graduating from Oakwood with my undergraduate degree in elementary education. I uh, had never heard of speech language pathology, didn't know it was a thing. Um, began teaching elementary grades and loved it, but I had an itch to do something different. It was through teaching that I learned about speech language pathology um, I worked closely with a speech language pathologist at my school. And I was like, hey, you know, I like what you do. I want to do what you do. Um, I liked how she worked with kids in an intimate setting, and I felt that it would be more impactful. My experience here at Andrews definitely wasn't perfect. I was faced with many challenges academically, spiritually, physically, and emotionally. But I, genu I genuinely can say that God had had a leading hand and guided me through it all. I have gained many precious memories that I will take with me for the rest of my life. Thank you professors uh, for providing various experiences and perspectives on the subject matter that you taught that will allow me to help others in the future. Uh, thank you for, I'm sorry, thank you for providing a safe space space uh, for me to ask questions and just to be myself. Um, it was an honor to learn from individuals who I felt are co competent and confident in the field of speech language pathology. 
Thank you to my cohort. Um, it is every man's dream to be in a class full of beautiful, intelligent, and witty, strong, funny ladies as yourselves. Thank you for embracing me as the only male in the class, black male at that. It is no secret that in this field, that this field is predominantly white, female. Um, so it has been great to bring some diversity and spice things up a bit. But I have always felt the love whenever we are together. So I truly appreciate that. So thank you. Lastly, I'm almost done. Give me some time. I'm the only dude. So <laughs> <laughs> lastly, I would like to challenge us all as a class, myself included, to take the experiences from Andrews in our program, the lessons and the challenges to raise the bar. We have learned about the importance of communication and the importance that words have power. And often it is not what we say, but how we say it. So don't hold grudges or ill feelings with anyone. Just let it go. We have too much ahead of us, too much ahead of us to look back now. Let's take what we have learned and apply it to empower future generations to understand the power of their words. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Giselle Barrientos. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak to you today. This day felt like it would never come, but now that it's here, let's embrace it and let the moment sink in. Moving here was really remarkable for me. And for me, it is important to take the time to not only acknowledge the journey that this whole experience has been, but to also thank some people who were on this journey with me. Before starting this program, I just wanted an opportunity for others to look at my work, my desire to continue with my education of learning, to show them what I had. And I knew that maybe it was not going to be enough. Ultimately, I wanted to show what I can and will do. And if not, that would be the signal that God wanted for me to do something else. But I do believe that God works in mysterious and wondrous ways. And sometimes he does so in the simplest of ways, such as by having me develop the habit of checking my junk email folders just in case I missed something, something I randomly started doing towards the end of the application process for grad school, from which I actually saw my, um, my interview invite to come and get interviewed here. So this email check led me to a series of calls into what I thought as of the unknown of my journey. But God sent me angels along the way to guide me. Some of the angels who came across my path took the form of people who worked behind the scenes or were up front in the program. These angels were administrators in the program who helped me along with the interview I had, assuring me of times and dates, names and places, and so on. In addition, there were some ladies who were in a cohort ahead of me and are now amazing SLPs in their own right who took the time to be kind and helpful in ways that still amaze me. Plus, the future friends I met later during the program who were a big support, friendships that I hope will be forever. When I think of the administrators who acted as my angels, I think of the director of the program, Dr. Ferguson, and Dr. Coles White who seemed to have seen potential in me beyond just what was on paper, like a GPA or grades. Instead, they saw a more complete, complete picture of a person with experiences, strengths, and weaknesses. And they gave me the opportunity to show them what I had to offer and how I could add 
to the department and to my community, which it was my forever goal to help others. Um, and along with them, I have to thank my supervisors, Mr. and Mrs. Javila, Mrs. Laura Narvaez, Mrs. Coles, Mrs. Davison, Dr. Fernandez, Ms. Rebecca Brickman, and Ms. Kathy Solman, which I know every student that come across their path is going to be so lucky to have them as their supervisor. All of this were not only honest, but also wise and showed me how to be critical but caring while still, still maintaining humanity and compassion when things got challenging or difficult. And of course, my professors. For example, I would like to mention Ms. Brinja, who helped me with my very first eval report, <laughs> I will never forget, and who also helped me um, develop uh, that, that caring side of being in this profession, who also guided me to the answers I needed to increase understanding, um, as well as just giving me some of her valuable time to let my feelings come out during rough times. Also, I would like to mention Mrs. Schilling, telling us the true and actual percentage of how much book learning and real world experiences would shape us into becoming an effective and caring SLP. These people are all amazing and great role models in their own right. And I thank them all and truly, truly and sincerely. I have learned that sometimes, if not the majority of the time, things don't happen the way we want them to. No matter we, we stick to our planners in hand, um, yeah, I am a huge planner um, and I still use my notebook, but I know that even though I mark these special details in my planner and make notes, I know it's not a given that it will be all unfold as it is written or timed out. Things can and will change, but I think it's for something better and that God does things for a reason. He will prepare us in his own time and his own image of how things should be. And most importantly, he will always be there for us. We just have to be able to spot his presence through our thoughts and actions and through the people he places in our lives at the right times. To my classmates, I know we are sometimes hesitant of our purpose, purpose, purpose in this world. But I know God has a great purpose for all of you, and I know that big things are ahead of you. Just trust God. Trust yourself. And I cannot wait to see all the great things that you'll be doing. And I want, to, I want you all to know that every single one of you has taught me something new during this experience, which is to be open to learning from those who are different from us to listen to their experiences and find ways to agree when we might want to disagree. And to me, it's funny because even though we're all very different, we all have the same passion to help others through our craft. And this career brought us all together. And I can safely say that I wouldn't choose another cohort but yours only. Of course, I also want to thank my family uh, which are my most important group of angels. And of course, I also want to mention my aunt, Diana, um, who has guided me. Sorry. Through little moments in life. Sorry. Before she passed, when she gifted me her time and advice when I needed it. She might not be around us physically, but I know she's still present in our family's lives through dreams, to dreams and whispers, to listen to our hearts and trust God's plans for us. Um, um, to my mother and my father, my brothers and sisters, and Roberto, my boyfriend, who all have shown me in different ways how to be strong when I feel weak, to stand tall when I feel crouching into a tiny ball and to stay firm in my beliefs. I know each and one of you has made sacrifices in your lives to stay as, to stay a part of my life and give me guidance and advice when I needed it. Mom and dad, you gave me an unconditional support and with this 
distance, it's I still felt you right beside me the entire time. Um, mamá, papá, es todo un privilegio poderlos llamar así. Gracias por su apoyo incondicional, que pues a pesar de la distancia, lo sentía junto a mí. Gracias por ser unos padres ejemplares, por formarme y hacerme la persona que soy el día de hoy. Por su ejemplo, tengo los mejores papás del mundo y esto es para ustedes. My sisters, Anaisa, Marta, and my brothers, Germán and Ricardo. Thank you all for being present to listen to me and to remind me to stay the course, even when times got really difficult. I also want to mention my nieces and nephews to, and encourage them to dream big and to never give up on those dreams, that dreams do come true. Roberto, thank you for being with me on this path, for making things go flow smoother and for believing in me since day one. Ricardo, you once said to me, let's do this in plural, not in singular. I will always carry this idea to include others in my life, to keep them close and remind them that they are not alone. No more singular, only plural. Thank you all for your time and congratulations to all my fellow classmates. I wish you all of God's graces and blessings. Thank you. Hi, that was so beautiful. Um, hello, my name is Jasmine Zawani. Oh, I don't know if it's too close. Okay. Hello, Father. Um, and today, I oh, tonight, this evening, I have the privilege to read to you guys a scripture reading um, that is found in 1 Peter um, chapter 5, verses 6 through 7. And it says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that the, at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. I hope you guys were blessed by these verses. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Today I have the privilege of introducing a woman who has been a role model for excellence, hard work, and professionalism throughout my five years at Andrews University. When I was asked to introduce today's speaker, I wanted to effectively communicate how truly inspiring she is. I quickly came to the conclusion that the best way to do this is to let her accomplishments speak for themselves. Tammy Schilling received her Bachelor of Art degree in speech pathology from the University of Kansas. She went on to receive her Master of Arts degree in speech pathology from the University of Kansas Medical Center. She furthered her education with a Master's of Science degree in Management from Baker University. She is currently working on her PhD in Education with a focus in Curriculum and Instruction at Andrews University. Mrs. Schilling's clinical experience includes, um, as she worked as a clinician, as well as operations and clinical management. She brings experience with adults, neurocognitive disorders, dysphagia, voice, and modified barium swallow studies in a variety of settings. She has worked in skilled nursing facilities, home health, acute care, rehab hospitals, and outpatient settings. As a student at Andrews University, I've had the privilege of experiencing Mrs. Schilling and how she blends her clinical knowledge and curriculum content um, into a stimulating learning environment. I have watched her adapt each course year by year in order to constantly provide accurate and up-to-date education. She has a passion for evidence-based therapy and has engaged in conducting research of her own. I have worked in partnership with her as she's poured years into producing research for the field of speech language pathology. Not only does she display excellence in professionalism in her career, but her energy and worth ethic translates into other areas of her life. Ms. Schilling recently has started a, flesh, a fresh flower farm in Buchanan, Michigan called Mimi's Cat Flower Farm. You guys should look her up on Instagram. It's very beautiful. <laughs> 
Ms. Schilling's ability to have such high productivity and quality in all specs, aspects of her life is truly inspiring to me. On a personal note, you have been a safe place and support for me during my five years at Andrews University. I would like to welcome our speaker and soon to be Dr. Tammy Schilling. All right. Wow. I'm not sure I knew the woman you were speaking of, Julia, but thank you so much. Um, first of all, I want to thank all of you for giving me the honor of speaking to you this evening. As I look at all of your faces this evening, I have so many memories with each one of you. I'm very inspired by and I'm proud of your accomplishments. And the title of my message tonight to you is Overcomer. I'm sure that's behind you, okay. I don't know how many of you have watched the Olympics over the last two weeks, but I'm always so awestruck and deeply inspired by the level of commitment and the many obstacles each of these athletes have overcome to get to the Olympic Games. There are stories of injuries, multiple surgeries, disappointments like losing by five tenths of a second, making the Olympic team, traveling to Tokyo only to test positive for COVID when you arrive, and then they have to fly someone in to take your place on the team. Family loss, sexual abuse, financial hardships, the list goes on. And to top that off, they've worked so hard living out their dream in Tokyo, and they can't share it with their loved ones in person all of the important people who have sacrificed so much and they're not there to support you, to cheer you on. As I listen to many of these stories, I believe each one of us in this room can relate to one or more of the stories and we have lived them as well. I would dare say that we have been competing in the School of Communication Sciences and Disorders Olympic Games, not for just the past two weeks, but for the past two years. Thank you. <laughs> Approximately two years ago, you started the graduate program journey and we had never heard of COVID-19 before. As you graduate this weekend, you can recount numerous stories of how COVID has impacted you academically, cognitively, physically, emotionally, financially, relationally, spiritually. The reason athletes make it to the Olympic Games is because they have overcome all of the obstacles that have been put in their way. They didn't give up, they believed they could do it, and many of them have a faith that surpasses their own strength and determination. Each of you are overcomers, and tonight you are Olympic athletes that have won the race. My prayer for you this evening is that you reflect on these experiences and journeys as you take the lessons that you've learned with you into the next phase of your life. You have been on an uphill journey over the past two years. The journey has been steep. Many times we were unable to see the top. I believe there are five secrets to becoming an overcomer that helped all of us make it to the summit, which we are celebrating tonight. These secrets are not just a way of thinking, but I believe that you reached the summit because you gained the appropriate mindset, the intention, and the action. Faith, perseverance, community, grit, and belief. Faith. You couldn't go anywhere in 2012 without seeing Gabby Douglas' dazzling smile or hearing about her absolute dominance in gymnastics. When asked how it felt to win the gold, she responded, it's everything I thought it would be. Being the Olympic champion is definitely an amazing feeling. And I give all the glory to God. It's kind of a win-win situation. The glory goes up to him, 
and the blessings fall down on me. Let, the, let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things that he does for me. The faculty in the School of Communication Sciences and Disorders have prayed for each and every one of you through this journey. As a faculty, we have many challenges and barriers due to COVID and many decisions we made as an act of faith that God that we serve will make all things good as he promises. We believe this is God's program, not ours. Therefore, through faith, God has brought all of you to this weekend. The definition of faith is complete confidence or trust in something or someone that you cannot see. Many of you have exercised a large amount of faith over the past two years. You had so many questions, not enough answers, so many unknowns, yet it's clear that God worked it all out for all of you who began two years ago together, and this, this weekend you're all finishing together. How is that possible? God's the only answer I can come up with when I reflect on the pandemic and all that we've been through. May all of you praise God for being here this weekend. Never forget the good things that he has done for you in your life. Hebrews 12, 2 says, keep your eyes on Jesus. He will lead us and make our faith complete. Perseverance. Born as the 20th of 22 children in abject poverty in Tennessee, Wilma Rudolph was a sickly child and she suffered from bouts of polio, scarlet fever, and pneumonia. She was forced to wear a brace on her leg caused by the polio virus, and she was told she would never walk again. Rudolph, however, disproved her medical team by learning to walk, and age, at the age of 12, took up athletics, where she quickly made her mark as a talented sprinter. Age 16, she made her Olympic debut at the 1956 Melbourne Games, winning a 4 by 100 meter bronze medal. And at the 1960 Rome Olympics, the woman was dubbed the gazelle for her grace and style and became one of the stars of the games, powering to triple gold in the 100 meter, 200 meter, and four by 100 meter. I have no doubt there have been many times that each one of you wanted to give up. I know I have. You were tired, you were sick, lonely, depressed, lacked motivation. Sometimes it was just hard. Perseverance, persistence, tenacity, determination, they're all words that describe doing something even when it's hard or even when it seems odds are stacked against you. Whether it was studying for your comprehensive exams, the praxis exam, interviewing for your clinical placements, or working to meet your supervisor's clinical expectations, you didn't quit, you didn't give up, you persevered. Community. The idea of achieving a goal is a wonderful concept, but the reality is that maintaining motivation and daily habits to help you reach your goal can be difficult. The power of your community goal can be difficult. The power of your community, friends, family, in attaining your goals is often overlooked, but having that support is priceless. Even in the midst of isolation, social distancing, no travel, quarantine, masks, Zoom classes, our community looked different. Technology and social media became more important than ever to stay connected. As I watched the women's gymnastics team these past two weeks, I saw a sense of community, even though they compete against each other. They have trained together, they cheered for each other, they cried, and they celebrated together. Togetherness is an important aspect of life. It unites us, gives us security and much needed support. Most of all, it encourages us to love one another. So I challenge you to continue to seek a community of like-minded people as you venture out into your first jobs. The nice part of graduating from Andrews University is that you already have an existing community. We are right here, ready to support you, to stay connected with you, even when you're gone. And each one of you have created close relationships amongst yourselves and you're a group of speech language pathologists who can support each other and stay connected. Grit. Evan Dunphy, a Canadian Olympic athlete, competes in the unsung sport of race walking. His Instagram post had 1,731. That's how many kilometers 
I've walked and trained since my last 50 kilometer race in September, 2019. Over 10 million steps working towards this one final go. He says, my goal is clear, cross the finish line, knowing I gave everything that I had. The event has made him into a person that he is. It's taught him about perseverance, dedication, teamwork. He said, it's taught me how to dig deeper than I ever thought I needed to do. Yesterday, Evan won the bronze medal in the 50 millimeter race walk with a, or meter with a personal best time. You can do hard things when you put your mind to it. Grit is a characteristic that enables us to work hard and stick to our goals. Some may say it's a mindset, an attitude, self-control. Grit has been measured in the military, academia, and with athletes. A high level of grit is associated with several personality traits considered important in maintaining and handling the roller coaster ride of successes and failures. These traits have been talked about, resiliency against burnout, stress, negative emotions and anxiety. It's also been linked to greater sense of optimism, personal pride and self-confidence. Research has stated that grit, perseverance and self-discipline are better predictors of success in college than your SAT or your IQ scores. All of you have demonstrated high levels of grit. You didn't give up even when you may have wanted to. You had to dig deep, meticulously plan out things only to throw the plans out the window, and then learned a lot about yourselves. You did hard things and you did them well. And what I love most about grit is that it doesn't disappear once your goal has been reached. You have it and you can transfer it to the workplace and to other personal goals. Mm. Belief. Shawnee Braspenix is a track cyclist from the Netherlands. In 2015, at a very young age, she had a heart attack while she was practicing at an altitude camp in Colorado. She said it was the darkest moment of her life. She had a long journey of recovery, and she says that there were many times she believed her career as an athlete was over, and she was sure there would never be, she would never be able to compete again. She attributes her return to the Olympics to her mother and the great medical team that included her doctor and her physical therapist. They believed in her and restored the belief in herself that she could compete again and guided her training along the way. Shawnee missed the games five years ago in Rio, but yesterday at the age of 30, just six years after her heart attack, Shawnee won the gold in Tokyo. Sometimes when life is so hard, we need others to believe we can do it until we believe it ourselves. Believe in yourself gives you power to dream big. And when you believe in yourself, you're not limited to just making it through another day. You have big dreams and the faith that you can achieve them. When you believe in yourself, you're, not, you're able to push through the hard times. And this is because you know that you'll be able to solve the problem, weather the challenge, and also because you know that the hard times will pass. People who believe that they will succeed actually do, and having faith in yourself leads to success. As I conclude, unfortunately, I cannot tell you that this is it, that you've done the hardest thing in your life and you won't have any more hard times. But I speak from experience. There will be more hard times in your life like this, and potentially even more difficult. The question to ask yourself is, how will I respond? What do I have control of? What can I do today or in this moment to move forward? There are several promises that God gives us in his word that can keep us focused. You now have an incredible journey ahead of you where you can make a difference in the lives of your patients, your clients, your families. As a recover, instill the five secrets that you have learned into your clients and patients as they are on their own journey of restoring or developing their language mission. Here's what I love about our Olympic Games that have come to an end this evening. You all finished the race. 
you all reached the summit together and everyone gets a gold medal. I have given you two items this evening that I want to remind, help remind you that you're an overcomer. Keep the keychain with you to remind yourself of the challenges and barriers that you have overcome. And use this bookmark as you spend time each day reading and thanking God for all of the blessings that he has given to you. And most of all, don't forget the five secrets of being an overcomer. Remember to always put God first and have faith. Whatever happens, don't give up. Lean into people that can support you. Don't do it alone. You were made to do hard things and you have done them before. And lastly, believe that you can do it and believe in others. Thank you. Thank you. 
the part that you have been waiting for, the white coat ceremony. Giselle Barrientos and Carly Bates. Rebecca Bevins and Peyton Birchmeyer. Chelsea Cantave and Ansbeth Contreras. Jasmine Duani and Julia Johnson. Deandra Joseph and Caitlin Lopez. Sheila Maldonado Garcia and Brian McDaniel. Sun He Moon and Damaris Morris. Grace O and Caitlin Olson.
Karini Roca de Benedicto and Yvette Rubin. Courtney Shulo and Eden Stewart. and Kyle. Zakila Byron Stanley. So we know families want to take pictures of you guys in your white coats before we switch to our um, regalia fitting. So I'm going to invite you to come up on both sides. We'll take a few pictures and then both sides down will exit while our families wait patiently and listen to a little musical entertainment. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 
questions.
Hey, uh, Giselle Barrientos and Carly Bates. Rebecca Bevins and Peyton Birchmeyer. Zakila Byron Stanley and Chelsea Cantave. Elizabeth Contreras and Jasmine Duani. Julia Johnson and Deandra Joseph. Caitlin Lopez and Shayla Maldonado Garcia. Brian McDaniel and Damaris Morris and Grace O.
Caitlin Olson and Karini Roca de Benedicto. Yvette Rubin and Courtney Shulo. Eden Stewart and Heather Verhell. So what we'll do this time, we're going to move through the program, and then when we exit, we'll take pictures. Um, the faculty, we're going to go and put our regalia on uh, so that we can get some pictures with you. There will also be some refreshments. So as we move through, I'm sure you'll get some more uh, directions. So. All right. Uh, at this time, I'd like to invite the graduates to as uh, we recite the speech pass oath and all faculty and any other speech pass in attendance as well. All right, it can be found on page four on your program. Okay. For God, these things I promise to dedicate my life to follow in the footsteps of Jesus Christ's healing ministry, to reflect God's mercy by providing care to patients without regard to socioeconomic status, to place my patient's welfare above my own, maintaining patient confidentiality in accordance with practice, to exercise sound judgment and comply with laws and regulations that govern the speech language pathology profession and protects the public from unethical and incompetent acts. To respect the rights and dignity of all individuals while demonstrating integrity during interactions with colleagues, other healthcare providers, students, and patients to enhance my profession through lifelong pursuit and application of evidence-based practice, to participate in promoting the profession of speech language pathology to local, national, and global communities. With this oath, 
I accept the duties and responsibilities. I accept the duties and responsibilities that embody the speech language pathology profession. All right, congratulations, colleagues. You can remain you can remain standing or ask the congregation to stand so we can have our dedication prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that you have seen these students through two years and now you bless them with this graduation. I lift them up to you now and dedicate them to your service. Bless their families who have supported and sacrificed for them and may their journeys continue to serve you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You can be seated. Now we're going to invite the graduates to come up for a gift, and then you can go join your families in the back for refreshments. So, graduates, we invite you to march out and join your families. Before we celebrate, we want to thank our administrative assistants for all their work tonight. They did all the decorations and programs, so let's give them a hand.